Hey everyone, this is Neo once again from the Overclock magazine and today I have for you the ASRock Z590 Phantom Gaming ITX TP4. So for the duration of this view, I'm not going to give you all that long name. It's, it's just the ASRock Mini ITX boards, okay? So this is the Z590, the latest version of the Mini ITX boards and obviously the most high-end version. And what that means is that it comes with all the bells and whistles that you might come to expect from Z590. So that is support for Rocket Lake, better uh, memory OC but we'll we'll talk about that a bit later on let's start with let's start with the positive I mean damn I think this motherboard looks really nice you know uh red and black that that contrast always works you know every vendor that's ever gone with red and black on their product has actually managed to make it work and it really looks nice and as far as mini itx boards goes yeah i think this is easily the best one as rock has ever made the one thing that i do not like about it though is that it's got really sharp edges like these bits here these will slice your neck okay you shouldn't have your neck here but these will hurt you okay so just be careful with putting your fingers here anywhere here there's just a lot of sharp edges here which is not cool but outside of that i think it's a fantastic looking board back plate at the obviously at the back there yeah, that really helps as well just aesthetically makes it look nice let's talk serial ata cabling or rather the headers there's three on this motherboard so you can literally plug in three drives right but there's actually two that you can use because the third one depending on where you want to count from but if you come from the bottom so one two three is right over here i don't know if you can see this you, you can you can't see this look at this why would you have a sata port here behind the memory slots and then two more here like that's who who thought of this who thought this was a good idea and they've never done this before so it doesn't mean necessarily this is something that has to be there because of the size of the motherboard i just yeah this is this sucks anyway so this motherboard has a 10 layer pcb which is really awesome and it's actually something that happens with a lot of mini itx boards they tend to end up with better components than the bigger motherboards because i think board vendors realize you can't cut corners here okay there's not a lot of space so whatever you do put in here it has to function and it has to be worthwhile and these boards are not cheap of course so more than getting a 10 layer pcb you also get a 10 phase power delivery system like a direct 10 phase no doublers or anything like that obviously not all of those 10 phases go directly to the v core but i think at least eight of them maybe not i don't know but point is you can pump a lot of power to your cpu using this uh, 10 phase power design because each uh, power stage is actually 90 amps so there's a lot of power you can pump through here so 10 phase power design and a 10 layer pcb i mean you can't ask for better than that right but with that said though let's get to something that is even more important uh when it comes to just using this motherboard and what you will experience with it okay so if you look at the results of this motherboard particularly when it's overclocked it actually does so much better than even the first z590 motherboard that i tested the 11900k on and the 11600k on so every platform goes through an evolution like if you had to go back to whatever let's say you're using an amd platform right now your your ryzen 5000 you'll find that at this point with the latest bios versions and agisa and so forth it's so much of a better platform than it was when it was still new you know and the reason for that is updates microcode updates fixes and so forth so performance not only does stability improve performance as well actually improves as well so it's not just the platform is as it is when you get it and when it's released that's just uh that's just a, a slice in time literally it's just telling you this platform is like this at this point so the reason i had to tell you that is related to the performance of this motherboard which brings me to another point initially the only dram frequencies that were supported officially by this motherboard was ddr4-4266 over some time and as i'm saying to you right now they updated the website and i saw in the qvl they have ddr4-4600 as officially supported frequencies yes they have one kit that's like ddr4-5100 but it doesn't say what ic that is so i, I don't know i don't know how true that is however the 4600 does make sense because it's literally where i got stuck i'm hoping i'll be able to do better than that in future but i can't promise i know hk epc recorded over a ddr4 5000 for on this motherboard i don't know how they did that but uh, so it is 
technically possible but i was not able to achieve that and i was stuck or rather i achieved 4600 which is pretty good and rather fortunate considering that it's z590 or rocket lake and the reason i say that is because at least according to geekbench right the geekbench 3 memory uh, score so with rocket lake you'll notice that the efficiency in that memory score is much better than with comet lake or anything else we have on amd side I mean, getting a score previously of 10K was like really impressive, but you had to run something like DDR4133 CL12 or maybe 4800 CL12 or something like that to achieve a score that's above 10K. But now you can literally do that on a motherboard such as this one that will only do DDR4 4600 in my hands. And I was still able to record a Geekbench score of 10,500. Of course, ideally you want, I think it's fair to say on this platform, you want you, you for an efficient memory score, like a really tight and a really efficient one, you want like 11K, but 10,500 isn't bad. And in fact, it's actually better than any score I ever actually recorded on Comet Lake and before. So if you were going to be limited to DDR4 4600, it may as well be on the Z590 platform and it may as well be on this mini ITX board if you're going mini ITX because the efficiency is really 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 good on that but having said that this motherboard is actually much cheaper than any of the other equivalent mini ITX boards I think Newegg had it at 289 and locally we have it at zero because you're not going to be able to buy this motherboard locally or at least that i haven't seen it on at any retail store and from the retailers that i've spoken to it doesn't seem like this motherboard is ever going to show up here we've spoken about memory and the memory oc and so forth overall i'm i'm happy with the performance i got from ddr4 4600 i think i ran c17 or something like that the performance is really decent uh, but I would have liked more, you know, I would have liked the opportunity to explore DDR4 4800 or maybe, yeah, 4800 or even 5000 because these new CPUs are capable of that, especially using gear 2 mode. And then let's see. Oh, there's something pretty interesting that this thing actually has. So this header, this USB 3.2 header here is actually Gen 2 X2. So you can literally get 20 gigabits per second from this header here instead of the 10 gigabits per second you get that uh, other motherboard vendors provide for you and of course you still have the same back here right so this light blue usb 3.2 here is actually gen 2 x2 as well so there's two such ports you can use on this motherboard and that's pretty neat especially given the price that i told you about that's 289 and then what else do we have oh obviously as per name thunderbolt right so this is thunderbolt 4 or usb 4.0 if you want so overall what do i think of this motherboard i think it's fantastic it's just a pity that we will not be able to get it here in south africa it's not a perfect board by any means i mean i told you about the sata issue i told you about the sharp edges and yeah pretty much availability that's next to zero for us but outside of those things this is really is a fantastic motherboard and if i were to be in the market to buy a mini itx motherboard for a mini itx build I would still consider with this one, despite uh, my reservations I have about DRAM support and so forth, I would still consider this one. I would overlook this SATA thing because I really don't have any more SATA hard drives, or at least I have one left now. So I, this is not that important for me. However, for 289, I think that you can do a whole lot worse than this one. And in fact, for 289, I don't think you can actually do better than this one or less than $300. I don't think there's a Z590 mini ITX motherboard that's going to be better than this one. So yeah, if you are in the market, definitely give this one a look. And that's it from me about the Ashrock Z590 Phantom Gaming ITX Thunderbolt 4 motherboard. I'm hoping to catch you guys later on in the week. Until then, take care. Remember to share, like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the flip side. Take care and peace.